We are now looking at section 42, the asset for share transaction section. So this is the corporate rules section I'll be talking about. Now, just in simple terms, I'm going to draw up a little example just for you here so that you can see what we're talking about. So we have a taxpayer, let's call it taxpayer A, and we have a company called X Limited. Now, what this section talks about, the asset for share transaction, is basically exactly what it says, asset for share. So what will happen is, Taxpayer A will give an asset to the company and in return the company will give Taxpayer A shares in the company. So Taxpayer A becomes a shareholder of X Limited. So in other words, Taxpayer A, and that can be a national person or a company, is paying for shares in X Limited by giving an asset. Now, First thing I just want to quickly mention, Section 24BA, you'll remember, is the same thing. It talks about assets for share. Section 24BA will apply if the assets and the shares are not the same value. So, for example, if you give a 100 rands asset and you get 80 rands of shares uh, that's worth 80 rands, or you get, give a 150 rands asset and you get 200 shares. Those are all rules in Section 24BA. There are some implications there. Please revise that. For now, we're going to be looking at a situation where the asset is 100 and the shares that you get is 100, for example. Okay. Now, section 42 is going to apply, or we should consider it when it's an asset for share transaction. What is important for you to note is that we have to talk about the shares here and say, what percentage shares do you need to have? Okay, so that's one of the questions we're going to be answering. Now, before I continue with that, let's quickly talk about tax implications. This is a bit of a recap. So let's talk about taxpayer A. Now, this asset that's given here can either be a capital asset or trading stock. So now make sure that you listen to what I'm saying here. What are the normal transactions that you've seen so far? So in other words, if you did not know about corporate rules, or if corporate rules do not apply, remember that's very possible that corporate rules do not apply, they can agree in writing, what would happen? Taxpayer A, let's talk about a capital asset first. Taxpayer A will have a disposal of an asset. So that means Taxpayer A will calculate a recoupment and Taxpayer A will calculate a capital gain. It's going to be selling it at its market value. If it is trading stock, right, there will be a a deduction, and this is not to do with the disposal now, the deduction is either a purchase or opening stock for the stock that you've purchased. Okay, that's a normal rule. And then there's a disposal. Now, this disposal will be in terms of section 22.8, and it will be at market value. Now, guys, first up, if any of this which I'm showing you there seems new on, to you, means you've missed a substantial and very important part of the work in the past. This is nothing new, this is just a recap. This is what would happen. Right, then we have X Limited. If it is a capital asset, they will now claim allowances. And if it's trading stock, they will claim a deduction. And then just remember, if it's closing stock, it will be added back and if it's sold, it's gross income. Now, this is the normal rules. And as I've mentioned before, and I just want to reiterate this, if in an exam situation they tell you taxpayer A gives an asset to X Limited and gets shares in return, and they have agreed in writing that the corporate rules do not apply, then you will do what we've seen over here, and this is the normal stuff. And this is what you get asked most often. So if you see the word corporate rules and you all of a sudden forget about all of this stuff, well, then it means you purely don't know your work. So remember, this is the normal stuff that applies. Section 42 is going to change it. And what you'll see what Section 42 is going to do is all of these things are still going to happen. There's still going to be disposal, there's still going to be trading stock and so forth. But you'll see it is written in such a way that there will not be a recoupment, there will not be a capital gain, there will not be um, a uh, a profit, a taxable income here from the deduction is disposal of trading stock. And X Limited will still be in this position claiming these amounts. So that will be the same. 
So it's just going to take away and stop them from being a tax at this point in time. Because if they are now form part of the same group of companies or they are now involved with each other, the idea there is that but the SARS doesn't want to tax you and uh, have you pay value out of your business by paying taxes if it hasn't actually been disposed of to someone outside of the group. That's the idea behind it. So remember guys again, everything that you've seen here, this you should know, this is what would happen. And this would happen if the corporate rules do not apply or if they've just so decided um, that it would not apply. So let's go and see what section 42 tells about. So very important, asset for a share. So there will be an asset and there will be a share. So it says, it means any transaction in terms of which a person, see the word person, it doesn't say company or natural person, so it means it applies to companies, natural persons, any legal person, disposes of an asset and the market value of that asset equal or exceeds, if it's a capital asset, the base cost, and if it's trading stock, the amount that was allowed as a deduction under section 11A or 21, 1 or 2. Section 11A, general deduction formula, that's the purchases amount. Section 22, 1 or 2, that's the opening and closing stock. So I'm just going to say opening stock. So what are they saying here? They're saying that this asset over here, if it's a capital asset, if its base cost is 100, then the market value must be 100 or more. So let's say 120. So they want there to be a gain there or null at worst. If it's trading stock, the deduction, let's say it was 100, it means then that the market value must be 100 so that it's null or more so that it's positive. So what do they not want? When does this not apply? This does not apply if the base cost is 100 or the deduction is 100 and the market value is anything less than that. Right? Because then you'd have a capital loss or you would make a taxable loss, an assessed loss. This does not apply to losses, basically. It only applies to gains. So that's the first part. They say, so a person disposes of an asset to a company which is a resident. So this X limited over here, must be a resident company. Right, then, and, that's important, that person, that person which they're talking about here, guys, is again this taxpayer. That person, at the close of the day, on which that asset is disposed of, holds a qualifying interest, and I'm going to put that like that in inverted commas, because there's a definition for it, and we're going to talk about it in a second, or, if that person is specifically mentioned to be a natural person who will be engaged on a full-time basis in the rendering of a service. Alright? Okay, so let me quickly explain to you. So this shares over here, you will always get shares. You will either get a qualifying interest at the close of the day or engaged full-time. Okay, I'll explain that in a second. Let's just continue with this first. And as a result of which that company acquires that asset, so they know when they talk there, they talk about this company here, yeah, X Limited. X Limited, they say, if it was trading stock, or it will be trading stock if it was held as trading stock. So they're saying here, if taxpayer A gives trading stock, then X limited must also use it as trading stock. That's what that says there. Or, a capital asset if it was held as a capital asset. So they're saying, if taxpayer A held it as a capital asset, then X limited must also hold it as a capital asset. Or, trading stock if it was held as a capital asset and that person do not form part of the same group of companies. So. Taxpayer A gives a capital asset, but then X Limited treats it as trading stock. Okay, that can also happen, but important, they cannot be part of the same group of companies. And remember, we have already seen what a group of companies are, and that is where there is a 70% shareholding. Okay, so now what I want you to see, here is just summarized. The person gives a capital asset or trading stock to the company and 
there will be shares, always shares in return. Remember, this is asset for shares. That person then either holds all the qualifying interest or is engaged on a full-time basis. So let's first talk about what a qualifying interest means. A qualifying interest means equity shares held by that person in a company that is at least 10% of the equity shares. Or an equity share in the same group of companies. Okay, so what does this mean? This means this person will give assets to the company and get shares in return. To have a qualifying interest, this person must then have 10% or more of the shares. Now what's important here for you to understand, this does not mean that person A gives an asset to the company and this company gives 10% of the shares. That does not mean that. It just means that this person must have 10% of the shares at the end of the day. Remember what I say? At the close of the day, hold the qualifying interest. Now what does that mean? It means, if I give you as an example here, let's say this person already had 6% before. So this person was a shareholder, already had 6% in the company. And now the company gives an extra 4% of the shares, which then adds up to 10%. Then this will still apply. So don't mistake it and think that the person must receive 10% of the shares. No, the person must just have must receive some shares because it's an asset for share, but must have 10% afterwards. So if you've already had some shares and now you get a bit extra, as long as it's 10%. D over here just tells you if you're already part of the same group of companies, then it's not 10%, it is just an equity share. So even if they give you 1% of the shares, that would be fine, or less than that. Okay, but we said the person either has a qualifying interest, which for now means 10%, or if the person is engaged on a full-time basis, rendering a service. Okay, so let me explain to you what that means. Let's take um, me, Rulon. Yeah, I am. I want to go and work for this audit firm. And this audit firm, guys, is a company. Okay, normal company, let's say. So, understand now what that means. I want to be a partner here. So I will go and I will say to this firm, all right, I will bring my laptop to the business. That's my asset I give you. And then you will give me shares. Now, I don't have to receive 10% 10, 10 of the shares. I could even receive 1% of the share, whatever. As long as, plus, I am then working on a full-time basis for them, rendering a service. So if you thought that sounds a bit strange, it's because you're probably thinking about big companies. Why would a big company work like this? But it's for these type of situations. So that's a way for me of entering a business. So I'm actually transferring my assets into a business that I'm going to be using it from. And I get some shares. That's the idea behind that, when it would also apply. Okay, so what are the consequences for the person who is disposing of the assets? So I'm reminding you, we're talking about taxpayer A. Now I'm going to remind you first of all, again, remember, if this section does not apply, you would do everything we discussed here. It will be the disposal of an asset, you'll calculate recoupers and capital gain. If it's trading stock, there will be deduction, that's from purchasing it or opening stock, and the disposal in terms of section 28 at market value. Okay, so let's now see what happens if section 42 applies. So, usually... If a person disposes of the asset for no consideration, there are consequences. If it is trading stock, it will be section 22.8. And if it's a capital asset, um, a capital gain and a recoupment must be calculated. Right. If section 42 applies, then the person is treated as if the asset was sold. See now carefully here. Yeah? If it was trading stock, and we're talking about the selling price will be the value of the shares received, guys. I also just want to quickly make that comment here, um, unless Section 24 BA applies. Basically, um, what I'm trying to say here, let me just actually reword it here, is if the market value of the asset is equal to market value of the shares. If your market value of the asset is 100 and the shares are worth 80 rands, then the selling price will be the market value of the asset, okay, which you're getting rid of. Right. So just remember that, but in any case, we all know that that's what you're getting rid of. More important, if Section 42 applies. If Section 42 applies, then the person is treated as if the asset was sold. If it's trading stock, 
for an amount equal to your Section 11A or Section 22 one deduction, or if it's a capital asset for an amount equal to the base cost. Okay, so let me explain. Okay, so if it's a capital asset, if the base cost is 100 and the market value is 150, let's say, if Section 42 applies, this market value, the selling price, will be equal to the base cost, whatever the base cost is. So it has a null capital gain. That's the idea there. If it was trading stock, and you claim the deduction, and this deduction for trading stocks either purchases or opening stock, let's say it was 100, and let's say the market value is 150, that's what would usually happen in terms of Section 22.8. But if Section 42 applies, you do not use 150, you use whatever an amount is equal to the deduction. So again, it has a null effect. So that's the idea, is that it creates a null tax effect. Right, the person is then treated as those shares that they acquired, if it was trading stock, it will be equal to the amount of the deduction, or if it's a capital asset, equal to the base cost. That's how much a share will be. What are the consequences for the company who is issuing the shares? Now, I'll remind you, we're now looking at this company, X Limited. X Limited is issuing the shares and receiving what? An asset. So, you'll remember I already said, there's a capital asset or trading stock, they will claim allowances, and if it's trading stock, they will claim a deduction for it. So, let's just see. The company that acquires the asset and then issues the shares is treated as if it originally, as if it originally acquired the assets. Okay, so that's the first thing I want you to understand. They basically transferred from the person giving the asset to the company. So if it's trading stock, the company will be treated as if it had acquired the trading stock on the same date as the original person and at the same cost. So the deduction will thus be based on that cost. I still make a comment here. Please note that you should still consider Section 9C. And that is, if the company sells it in the future, you just have to see how long have they held the shares, them and the person they received it from. If it is a capital asset, the company will treat it as if it had acquired the asset on the same date as the original person. So the tax value and the base cost of the asset will be the same. And you will be able to claim any further capital allowances if necessary. What is the effect on the contributed tax capital? Remember now, this company is issuing shares. And remember, if you issue shares and you receive money for it, it increases your CTC. So, the company will increase its contributed tax capital by, if it's trading stock, the amount that has been allowed as a deduction. If it's a capital asset, the tax value of the asset. Tax value is also equal to the base cost. And here we can see it discussed. For the purposes of the definition of contributed tax capital, if an asset is disposed by a person to a company in terms of an asset for share transaction, contemplating paragraph A, and that person at the close of the day on which that asset is disposed of holds a qualifying interest of the, or is a natural person who will be engaged on a full-time basis in the rendering of a service. So you can see they, they're, making this comp, um, they're applying this section, this whole section. They say if this applies. Then... The amount received by a crew to the company for the issue of its shares is deemed to be equal to. So this, the amount that you receive for the issue of its shares means your contributed tax capital is deemed to be equal to. If the asset is trading stock, the amount that was taken into account as a deduction. Or if the asset is an asset other than a trading stock, so a capital asset, the base cost of the asset. Right, so tax value equals base cost at the time of disposing it. And that is it then for this section.